Good morning, friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Justin. I play guitar on Songs in Nashville. And today, I'm going to teach you how to tune your guitar like a studio pro. It's really hard to be in tune these days. Music is made so much with synthetic instruments that are perfectly tempered to what the human ear wants to hear. And the guitar exists in this new world. The guitar is the same that it always has been. It exists in this new world as an imperfect system that's incapable of being completely in tune, right? So there are a few things that you need to be aware of with your guitar. There's a few things you need to do. And there's one thing that you must never, ever, ever, ever do when you're tuning your guitar. If you want to be as in tune as possible with a keyboard player who's playing all omnisphere patches or, or something like that, or you know, there's some other synthetic element to the band that you're auditioning for, touring with, playing a local gig with, recording with. You want to make sure that you put your very best foot forward and are in as tune as you can possibly be. So let's dive in. I'm going to play my Novo. For most of this, I'm also going to grab my Strat to show you how differently guitars can react when retuning or just trying to get it in tune or even when bending. Um, there are certain things that I really can't do on my Strat because of the way the bridge floats that I can do on other guitars. So right now I am in... Drop D flat. That's like drop D, but I'm a whole step down. So the string is D flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. Okay, so first thing that you need to be aware of uh, or that you need to do in order to play in tune, your guitar needs to be properly set up. Absolutely essential. Um, a lot of times I think people get a new guitar and it has new strings and it was set up to hang on the wall so that people would play it and it sounded good. They play it and they keep playing it and then a couple months later it just doesn't sound as good. It's not as inspiring. And then they stop picking it up and they're like, eh, I don't know. It's really, really important for me to be able to be in tune as well as I can. And having a proper setup is paramount to that, you know? A setup is as much about intonation as it is about playability. Like, don't just think about a setup in terms of, well, I want the action low so I can play fast and it's easy, or I want the action high so I can dig in real hard or whatever. That's only half of it. The other half of it is, how is the nut cut, right? Where are your saddles? How have you managed the length of each string so that notes in the middle of the string are as in tune as possible when you tune the open string? That's a big deal. And if you're not comfortable with doing that yourself, find somebody who does it and pay them for it. It's not much to have a guitar set up. It really isn't. And it's essential. So that's thing number one. <laughs> number two, you got to have good strings. And by that, I mean, they don't need to be brand new. They just need to be new enough that they haven't lost their ability to intonate. Okay, so some of you might have really gummy hands, like kind of kind of clammy hands or hands with a different pH and you just sort of kill strings quickly, you know? Others of you might be like me. I have the driest hands in the world. Uh, my wife hates it. My guitars love it. I don't ruin strings, but strings still go bad for me over time because what's happening as you play the guitar and as I play the guitar is I keep playing this note. <laughs> If I play that riff enough, I'm going to create divots at this fret, at this fret, and at this fret on this string. That's what happens when you fret a note. You are smacking the string into the fret. It's not super hard, and it's not covering a lot of distance, you know, 
but over time it develops a flat spot and a divot on the back side of the string. The problem with that is that as your string is attempting to oscillate, it's now out of round. It's no longer uniform from end point to end point, right? And so I notice over time, even though my hands are ultra dry and I don't gunk up my strings, they go out of tune over time. They just lose their ability to intonate and I can hear it. And then I think, oh man, I need to change my strings. So those two things, before you even touch a, a guitar and a tuner, you know, you've got to have it properly set up. And I guess I mean before you touch the guitar and a tuner, if you're not setting it up yourself. I do most of my own setups at this point, like minor stuff. I still take all my guitars to a guy in town who is fantastic. I'll take them to him in batches, <laughs> like three or four guitars at a time. I've had him come out to the studio and uh, kind of go through my main guitars as I'm playing, you know. Like, hey, I don't think I'm going to need my 335 for a couple songs. Can you, can you do that one next, you know? It's just ultra important. It's more important than it used to be because, again, we exist in a different ecosystem now. Music, so much of it, even in a live band, there's elements that are synthetic and that are perfectly tempered. And, you know, we play this imperfect thing. Um, so being as in tune as possible is a really big deal. So that's, that's the first two things. A setup and new enough strings that they actually can intonate. I'm a Diodario guy. The String Joy is a great company too. Um, I just really feel comfortable with Diodarios. I'm used to how their 10s and 10 and a halfs and 11s, just their standard NYXLs, how they feel. I love that when I put them on, they sound nice and clear and they don't really change at all for me until they start to not intonate well. So. Third thing, third thing you need to do. Now this actually involves tuning your guitar. You need to tune how you play. What I mean by that is that when you are tuning a string, you need to strike it with the same velocity as you do when you play. And you need to tune it in the same position as when you play. Don't tune your guitars flat on a bench like this, okay? And then pick them up and play them like this. Gravity is working one way here, and it's working a different way here. Well, gravity doesn't change, but the guitar's position means that it pulls in, it's pulling in a different direction. All right? So, one thing I will do uh, when I'm tuning, since I'm in drop D flat, why don't I tune up to standard? Let's do that. So, D flat, let's go to the neck pickup. Uh, that's uh, number 3A, I guess. Tune on the neck pickup. You want to hear, you, you, your tuner wants to hear more fundamental, okay? And it can hear that better when it's hearing the string out here rather than back here. There's so many more harmonics and, and the fundamental is lost in, in a bunch of high end and, and all the things we love about the way bridge pickups sound, right? You can even roll your tone back or um, use the, the shoulder of your pick when you tune. So D flat up to D. Now I know, here's A flat up to A, D flat up to D here, G flat up to G, B flat up to B, E flat up to E. Now I can't start playing. I've just significantly changed the tension on the neck, okay? And I've done it one string at a time. And so each of those strings even on fixed bridge guitars, they affect the others to some extent. Your neck wants to conserve tension. And when you change one string, generally it will affect the others. It might be just a tiny bit, like on a Tele, or you know, a Tele with a big neck, or a, a Les Paul you know, with a wrap tail or something like that. Um, or it might change them drastically, like a Strat. I'm gonna show you with my Strat here in a minute. Um, so what I need to do is go back over them and fine tune, right? Wow, my E is very flat because I brought it up to pitch and it was in tune, but then as I tuned the other strings, changing the overall tension on the neck, the E string has compensated by going flat. So let's go back up. Same story with my A, same with the D. Do you hear how hard I'm hitting the strings? 
I'm just, I'm tuning how I play. It's a big deal. B string, up, E string, up. And I'm just gonna go over them again. I will change strings on a guitar at 9, 15, 9, 30, before a 10 a.m. downbeat, because I know that I can get it in tune, and I fine tune, and I check, and I play. If I put a brand new string set of strings on here and I got it in tune, I will then go through and go. Just something like that. Let's go back through and check. Yep, they're still settling. They're still settling into their new tension because I was in drop D flat, right? I was a half step down with the low string down another whole step. So the low string has gone up a step and a half. Everything else has come up a half step. So, and then I'll kind of grab them and yank on them a little bit like this. By the way, it really helps to use a fast tuner. My favorite tuners, and I have no affiliate links for, for these because I think you got to buy them direct, Sonic Research Turbo Tuner. I, I use ones that are the size of a mini overdrive pedal, and they are fast. <laughs> like, I can play... I'm watching it track all those notes. That's crazy. And it's a strobe tuner, right? That's a whole other video topic, how to properly use a strobe tuner. Um, but it's ultra fast, helps me in my job. I set tuning. I go back and fine tune. I yank on the strings or do some goofy bends all the way across the neck. I fine tune again. I'm just gonna yank again just because. And if I'm not, you know, sitting here talking to you all about it, this process takes a minute, maybe. Once I have all six strings on, tune up to pitch, yank on them, tune them again, yank on them again, tune them again, play, do some big bends, tune them again, yank on them again, and then they're settled, you know? They're, they're generally, generally settled. When I'm, when I'm filming myself working here, I don't generally tune a bunch. I won't tune and then fine tune and then fine tune and then fine tune while y'all are watching. Sometimes I just cut that out of the video. I used to make everybody watch it. I, on my early videos, I would sit there and tune for the entire time just to, just to try to stress the importance of it. Because <laughs> music, Music is the organization of sound, right? Into pitch and rhythm. And if you haven't quite organized it on the one front, that's just like not organizing it on the other, like having bad pocket, right? These are things that we can work on and things that, that help us to work as musicians, help us to get gigs, help us to get other people to want to play music with us, you know? Um, that's what helps us help others sound better, right? That's, that's the whole point of this channel. Better yourself, better others through your guitar playing. It's possible. That's uh, how I've made a career, you know? So that's number four. Number five, the thing you should never, ever, 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 ever do. Don't ever tune down to a note. Always go below and tune up to it, okay? Your guitar... Your strings are anchored at the nut and at the saddle, all right? And you never want to decrease the tension with them anchored and then start playing it. You're going to pull it out of tune, guaranteed every time. What you do want to do is come down below where your tension needs to be, the pitch that you're aiming for, and tune up to it. Raise the tension to the pitch, and that will pull the string properly into place at the nut and at the saddle. If you tune down to it, chances are, especially on a wound string, you're leaving the anchor points the same as what the string's previous pitch was. And so you're not really gonna tune the string. I hope that makes sense. Always come below and tune up to the note, all right? Now, last thing I wanna do is grab my Strat and show you what I mean by strings affecting other strings in a pretty extreme way. This is a floating bridge strat. I can, you know, go down in pitch with the bar, but I can come almost a, a half step up as well. I just like having a, a wide, 
range for the the whammy bar and it's a totally traditional strap bridge i have no locking anything anywhere on the guitar i don't lube anything up and um, i just have things set up properly there's no burrs in the in the nut there's no burrs in the saddle that that are making things get hung up so check this out So, <laughs> this is going to be crazy. Oh, by the way, I'm playing my sweet Jim Kelly amp. Really great amp. So, what I want to do is just bend on one string without playing the note while another string's ringing out, okay? But let's tune the guitar first. Let's get, let's get absolutely in tune. Okay, that was a little sharp. I go down and come back up. And I'm tuning at the velocity I play. That looks okay. That was a hair sharp. That was a hair sharp. Seems like everything was just a little bit sharp. So now I'm going to pull on them. I've got 11s on my Strat. I just, for some reason, I don't like the way 10s sound as much. I think Strats benefit tone-wise from bigger strings more than, more than most other guitars. I don't know. So I think I'm in tune. What's hard to do on a Strat are compound bends, right? And what I mean by those are, are those bends that you do on a Tele where you hold one note in position and bend another. Listen to that high note. It drops as I bend the other. I mean, it, it's not ultra drastic, but it's enough to make it sound pretty sour. So I'm just going to play the open E string. <laughs> and then you hear it return to pitch. It's because my bridge is floating here, you know. I can go... Uh, So, on a, on, a, on a guitar like this, that has a floating bridge where everything affects everything else, it's ultra important that you fine tune. And something that I do to get between, say, E and E flat really quickly, is I will tune the first three strings well past the pitch, okay? I'm aiming for a half step down for everything, all right? Now, check this out. So, I'll take the low E string, I'll go all the way to, down to D on it. A string, I'll go past A flat, I'll go past D flat on the D string, and then the next three I kind of just put in the ballpark, right where I want them to be, even though I know I'm going to need to fine tune them. Okay, so now, remember I tuned the E down to D. Where is it? It is barely flat of D sharp. So my fine tuning, first of all it's faster, and secondly it doesn't affect the other strings as much, right? So, it makes this process faster. This was barely flat of A-flat, barely flat of D-flat. Again, we're trying to conserve tension, and with a floating bridge, it, everything affects everything else even more. Then I'll yank on the strings, do another pass. That's, that's pretty much dead on.
If I were on a session, I would probably stop and just double check one more time. Well, I hope that helps you. I hope it helps you play in tune. I hope it helps you give more attention to the fact that you need to be in tune. Um, if you need to get your guitar set up, go do that. You know, if you need to change strings, do that too. That's a quick process. It really is. I know everybody dreads it like, oh, I got to change strings. It's not that bad, actually. <laughs> and like I said, I'll, I'll change strings and get something in tune right before a session and not really have any problems, you know. If I do notice that something falls out of tune on a pass, I will stop playing and retune. And then I only have the section where I noticed it fell out to go back and punch, right? Or if it's a first pass and we're on a record, I know that we're, we're going to take a few more as we all hone everything in. So tuning's a big deal, you know? It's like, it's like dressing for the job you want in a job interview. <laughs> You need to be in tune. You want the gig? You need to be in tune because people will hire you if you make them sound better, right? So that's the whole thing here. Better yourself, better others. I'll see you guys later.